everyone. I want to thank you all for being here this afternoon. My name is Daniel. I'm here with my partner Laura and today we will be discussing inequity in the workplace. I'd first like to pose two questions to you all. How many of you are looking to enter the workforce in the next month or so by show of hands? All right, keep your hands up if you're looking to, over the course of your career, improve from your starting position at wherever company you land. Great. So today we're going to be looking at three distinct cases regarding inequity in the workplace from the perspective of both the employee and the firm to accomplish two tasks. The first being that we want to inform you all as future employees about a few of your protected rights in the workplace and steps you can take in the case that your employer were to infringe on those rights. The second task we want to accomplish today is providing recommendations from the manager on the flip side of those cases in order to make decisions to deal with or potentially avoid these types of situations in the future. So the first case we're going to look at today involves a former employee of BNSF Railway Company who was fired due to a handful of performance deficiencies. This employee was also a former Marine and consequently suffered from PTSD and brain trauma incurred while he was in the, the military. Unfortunately, he did not inform the firm about his conditions and he actually had a record showing that his condition was directly related to his performance deficiencies that he didn't file with the firm until after his termination. So when the employee filed suit against the firm, not only could he prove that his performance was directly related to his condition, but he could also prove that he had unsuccessfully sought, um, sought guidance regarding his performance from his supervisor and that his performance was not inconsistent from his coworkers in a similar position in the company. It is also worth mentioning that his coworkers often mocked him and treated him unfairly due to his condition, thus adding to the already unsafe and uncomfortable work environment. So our recommendation for the firm in this instance, instance would be to immediately terminate the firing, that firing order once they learned of his condition, presuming that this was all after he was fired. Once they had learned of his condition as a former Marine with all of his uh, brain trauma going on, the number one priority in that instance should have been to create a more safe work environment for him and other employees like him in their company. From a labor force and employee perspective, this case should be alarming to other veterans looking to enter back into the workforce following their service. And our recommend recommendation for them would be to be as upfront and clear as possible about any conditions they may have incurred during their service in the military prior to being hired with the firm so that the firm can adequately, adequately accommodate their needs and work to create the best work environment possible for them. This second case involves an employee of Aero Airways who in July 2020 reported experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 to the firm. The firm then asked him to get tested and self-isolate for the three or four days in between getting tested and the results coming back. Once the results came back positive, the employee was terminated. The employee then filed lawsuit against the firm under the Americans with Disabilities Act, the Family First COVID Response Act, and the Florida Civil Rights Act. The court actually upheld the first two claims despite the fact that the firm claimed that the employee did not qualify for a paid sick leave at when he tested positive for COVID under the COVID Response Act. The timing of this case leads us to imagine that the firm did not have concrete guidelines for dealing with internal COVID cases given that this, was, this may have been relatively early in the pandemic. And our recommendation for the firm would be to grant the paid sick leave days uh, to the employee once the employee tested positive for COVID. We believe it was the definitely wrong choice to immediately terminate the employee, the employee at that time. And although this case may not have had a, an effect on the labor force as a whole, it does help us understand how employee or how firms may have been unsuccessful in dealing with internal COVID cases early in the pandemic, 
and can help us understand some of the drawbacks that may happen in the future if another global event were to affect the entire labor population across the planet. Now I'm going to turn it over to Laura to look at our third and final case and our overall recommendations. Thanks, Daniel. The third and final case we looked at is Frederick versus Eller Manufacturing. This case deals with a manufacturing employee, actually from Michigan, so this hits pretty close to home. Uh, in <coughs> March 2020, Gretchen Whitmer declared a state of emergency and issued a stay-at-home order. Employees at this, or manufacturing employees at Aller were deemed essential workers and were told they had two days to self-quarantine and then they should continue coming back to work as usual. Frederick, the person in this case, notified the firm that he'd be taking his remaining 112 vacation hours to self-quarantine further. Once he notified the firm, they told him that if he were to move forward with this decision, they would take it as his re resignation. Frederick then obtained a doctor's notes recommending that he work from home if at all possible. And as he forwarded that note onto the firm, they told him that he was terminated for his poor absence. Frederick then filed claim um, under the Americans with Disability Act and Michigan's Person with Disabilities Civil Rights Act. He claimed that his smoking addiction and pneumonia were disabilities under both acts. He did, however, admit that his only limitation was the inconvenience and finding time to smoke. So then the court ruled or found that neither his addiction or his sickness were disabilities under either act and dismissed the case. They said that his termination was legitimate and non-discriminatory. Our recommendation for the firm would be to allow Frederick to take these 112 hours of vacation time. If he were to exceed these 112 hours, then the firm would have any right to terminate him, but if he's willing to sacrifice these hours, then he should be allowed to do so. The firm, or if Frederick were to test positive for COVID or someone in his household would have, thus endangering other employees, then he would be granted further sick time. This case is important because it brings up a lot of potential health concerns that come with COVID. Um, it really brings light to how firms dealt with the stay at, home, stay at home order and employees' absences while being deemed essential workers. As we conclude our presentation, a lot of questions come up. As students, we all need to evaluate what type of firms we want to bring our talents to while we're preparing to enter the workforce. We need to be confident that our that our skills are going to be appreciated, valued, and celebrated at the firms we choose to work at. From these three cases, it's evidence that decisions from the top directly affect even employees at the bottom, and that really needs to be thought of when considering where we want to work. On the other hand, most of us are probably trying to climb the corporate ladder, some of us probably obtaining the roles as managers one day. As managers, it's so important that we learn and sympathize with each of our employees' past to help build a strong relationship with them. It's important that we um, observe and acknowledge how employees act with one, of an, with one another in front of top management, lower level management, and in private. And lastly, em managers need to encourage and establish a safe line of communication. At the end of the day, every relationship has two sides. We can only do our part into maintaining and creating these healthy workplace relationships. Happy employers breed happy employees. Any questions for us today? Who has a question for Laura and Daniel? What was the hardest part when you were dealing with the COVID case, trying to find the documentation for that company? Um, either the second case? Yes, the second case. So, I mean, they, the firm essentially just terminated the employee, mm -hmm. like just based off a positive test. So, I mean, and he had, the employee had like paid sick leave available for him. Um, so our recommendation was actually pretty simple. Like we just think the firm Fit, you know, really poorly mishandled that situation. Um, should have granted the employee sick leave as he had to self-quarantine 
um, and then you know give him his job or let him keep his job once he returned from quarantining. Do you think it was appropriate for um, the man who was smoking and causing himself those health issues for them to deny his claim because he did it to himself, or do you think they should have went through with it because he did have some problems? Um, I personally think that in regards to taking the vacation time, he should have been allowed to take that, but at the end of the day, um, bringing on illness to yourself through smoking is not a disability you were born with or obtained over time. So I think that um, he probably should have been able to work from home if at all possible, but um, I think it was up to the firm to terminate him. Yeah, the fact that he did also obtain a doctor's note recommending that he work from home um, kind of helps his case in that instance. Thank you so much. Nice job.